Okay, good morning. I'm going to give you a brief demo of our Collaboratorium dashboard in action today. Here we are on the SSRG homepage. I'm going to load up the URL for the tool. You'll notice that part of the URL is specifying which project I'm looking at. We uh, determined that it was much more efficient to use a separate page and a separate URL for each project as opposed to a um, selector. So a quick overview here. We've got multiple tabs on our interface to show different views of our projects. And over here on the right, an important feature is the show filters and trace button. We'll get to that in a little bit when we do some filtering. First, uh, I want to take a look at this team. This is a team that appeared to struggle during their development. And uh, we'll see if we can get some evidence of that uh, through this view. And then we'll take a look at another team, which are the two teams uh, shown in the paper, and uh, take a look at the differences between those two teams. So here in the ticket timeline, we can see we have a view, scrolling view across the bottom. This is a, uh, showing the calendar from September through to November of the project. See, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of uh, tickets being created, ticket being our tracking system. Big lull here in the middle um, and some in the beginning. Uh, we'll see there's a total of 137 actual tickets on this. Uh, or not tickets, but ticket edits, where um, uh, any kind of action on a given ticket is, is marked as an activity, and there's 137 ticket activities here. To get some more detailed view, I want to open up this ticket effort tab. And we'll let this load up. Now, if we take a look at this, we can see that the distribution of work across these 137 different changes is uh, quite large. And we'll see this user here is 56 different changes, this user 46, this user 23, and this user here has quite a small number, 12 out of the 137 ticket changes, which uh, is kind of representative of their low effort on this work. Um, the other viewpoints shown here, we can show a different contribution amount per ticket uh, across all the time, um, across the different tickets which isn't very interesting to us right at this moment. And then this would be the contributions over time. We can see that there's just huge bursts here which correspond to uh, deadlines, obviously, for the project. Um, I want to go back to the team dashboard of the ticket timeline. And uh, let's bring up the filter. And let's take a look. What was that uh, student we were looking for? Non-207. And then let's take a look at non-on-207 in a little more detail here. We're going to uh, hit the refresh button and filter down and see just their work. And we'll notice it's a very small amount of work being done across time. A, a single ticket here where they're doing a description of themselves and then uh, a status update. You know, something was completed here on a given ticket. A change of owner, change of description, um, something with was a milestone set to it. and. Uh, you can see they actually uh, completed a ticket here. Uh, there's one single comment on a ticket here where it says it only works for the tree view on ticket number 1134. And we can see that it's marked as completed. And a couple other ones were marked as completed, but with no other uh, comments put on them. So let's take a different view here. I'm going to close up this uh, one tab. And we're going to switch over to the asset effort visualization. Let this load up. And we can see here we've, again, got a poor distribution of work. Um, uh, this is contribution 729, 1729 actual changes to files during the project lifetime. And we can see here our previous user, Anon 207, only has 37 of those changes compared to 254, compared to 640 compared to 798 uh, for the rest of the team. You'll also notice, I'm going to close up this filter, um, the burst, heavy burst during project deadlines is apparent in these visualizations. Another nice view that uh, can be used depending on what you're looking for, we can see that the majority of the project uh, contribution changes are Java files. Uh, there's some images here, some HTML. Uh, but uh, this, depending on what type of project you're looking at, you might be interested in who's changing what. Uh, again, here we're seeing the type of operations over time. 
uh, as modified it added or delete to the subversion uh, system. One thing that's interesting to note here as well is a high proportion of adds as opposed to modifies. So it looks like a lot of files are just being done offline and then pushed into the subversion system since that was a requirement for the project. Let's switch gears here now to a team with uh, much healthier behavioral patterns as we'll see. So I'm going to load up this other team four. And as we can see the patterns of uh, activity across tickets across the whole project is much healthier looking here. I'm going to go take a look at the ticket effort window. And yeah, we can see here uh, it looks a, a lot more healthy in terms of who's contributing to tickets. We have 458 total changes. A little bit of a disbalance here at the bottom. We've got 50, um, 58, and then uh, 150. And obviously, anonymous 215 is pulling the heavy end of the load. Uh, we can see it looks a lot nicer here in terms of the tickets are having a distribution over time, obviously, in a, in a project type course in a semester, students taking various classes, you're going to see bursts day to day. We can actually uh, take a look at things on a weekly interval, but I won't show that right now. So we can see it, they've done ticket development before coding, it looks like. Maybe we'll see that here in another view. Um, we can get contribution for tickets. It's looking like most tickets are just open and closed. And then again, ticket operations over time much more same type of view here. Okay, we're going to switch gears here and take a look at the code-based view for this team. I already preloaded some tabs here to save some time. We'll take a look at the asset timeline. You can see that the work effort across the whole project time seems to be much more uniform for this team. Um, if we take a look at the ticket act or the asset activity, we can see that there's 2,253 total commits. Anon 215 is obviously making a, a huge bulk of the changes here. Um, and the distribution across the rest of them is, is, is a little uh, more skewed. Um, we can see again the pattern of, of big commits during the uh, deadline, although that's to be expected. And then if we come down and look here on contribution a per asset, we'll notice that a big chunk of work is done in HTML here only by one user, and that leads me to think that uh, there's a big portion of the HTML being generated from Javadoc automatically, um, and we can get a look at that. So I'd like to take a look here, and just out of curiosity, we're going to filter this down to only showing the Java code. And then we'll hide those filters. And yeah, we get a, a, a little bit more of a bump here that Anon 214 seems to be doing a bigger proportion of the work, but definitely weakness on the Anon 213. We'd have to look into that uh, details to see why that would happen. One other thing I want to point out here is that we'll notice with this team, there's a larger proportion of modifies as opposed to adds. So it looks like they're actually putting things into subversion and then modifying them over time as opposed to just dumping them in when it's required. Um, another uh, view I'd like to look at here is the ticket versus asset activity, which just gives us a side-by-side -side view of what happened with tickets during the uh, term project and what happened with the coding. And we can see that there's more front loading for this team than the other team, that they actually did some more planning apparently uh, by looking at this tickets and this has probably led to the success of this project. So let's take a look at uh, a couple more views on this last team. I'm going to take a look at the communication timeline. And we'll see that it looks like this team communicated quite a bit over the length of the project. Uh, let's take a look at the communication linkage as well. <coughs> and this shows a core diagram of who's sending messages to who. Uh, when we're using mailing lists, we count a message to the mailing list as being a message to all of the people there. And then uh, this is a forest directory diagram to let you know who's talking more to who. One thing I'll note in this is um, if I look across all users, it looks like a non-104 sending the bulk of the messages. But in fact, a non-104, I know because I, of the anonymization of this data, is actually a teaching assistant. So I'm going to pull that user out of this uh, view. I'm going to refresh this and hide the filters. And we'll see that the distribution still looks heavily on an on 212 and an on 215 doing most of the communication um, across the team. 
um, we could also go back to say the communication timeline and do the same thing and say let's uh, filter out the messages coming from the teaching assistant and get a better view of the actual team as opposed to the teaching assistant asking them to come in and show them something or put comments on their code base or tickets or such. Alright, thank you.